Okay, okay. We, we are three, two, one, live, go. All right, everybody, welcome to this special event of the Boom Cubator and Boom Closers groups on Facebook. I've got my mentor and teacher, Claude, the Mentor Diamond, on today. And he has graciously offered to talk to us about his uh, proprietary guts sales method, which he has been doing for 30 years plus, I do believe. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm only 20, and I'm only 36. So how the hell did that happen? He started at <laughs> six years old. To get going to where he is today. So <laughs> right, in, right in like right in the kid. But instead of a pacifier, mom gave me a cell phone. <laughs> so Claude is the real world NYC board investor, born in New York City. He's basically created a wonderful million dollar lifestyle for his family, uh, thanks to this uh, gut sales method that he's going to talk to us about. Claude and uh, his wife Claudia, who you may see walking around behind him sometimes. Yeah. Uh, spend Claudia, time walk behind us later. <laughs> you can say hello to Andy. That's right. The, so they've got, uh, right now they're in San Diego, right? Ray, rainy San Diego. And it was rainy only San is, Diego. And it's, it's cold. It's only what, 63? Oh my God. It's like four degrees down there. here, man. They just came about two, three weeks ago from Winter Park, Colorado, where they have another home. And they also have homes in other places, but also Pinehurst, North Carolina. So, uh, Claude is pretty unconventional. He's a as you can, you'll, you've already seen. He's irreverent. He's humorous. Uh, he doesn't hold back information. And basically, his million dollar business that he's got today, he created using guts. He's the author of three books or many books actually, but the three that I'm going to note here: Four. Uh, Gut Sales Method Rules, 2019. This is his newest book. Uh, he's got the mentor teaches the gut sales method and how to sell with guts. And, and in the just let me say before I hand it over to Claude, um, he has offered. Um, something in the chat section so just pop over to the chat uh he's giving you a, a, a deal today and i'm sure he'll talk about that so without any further ado mr claude diamond oh thank you what a nice uh, what a nice introduction thank you thanks for uh, hi karina thanks uh, hi everybody for joining us hi sam lewin's here uh, a lot of my friends are here I want to talk about sales i love sales i think sales is the most important thing for the success for your personal success your business uh, I'm the former world's worst salesperson, okay? How many people here? We're all taking sodium pentothal, and, and we'll have a couple. I'll buy you guys a couple drinks here, okay? Let me pour it into the Zoom. But the thing about it, we're here to tell the truth. This is not a guru BS kind of thing. But I discovered that when I got better in sales, I made a lot more money. When I got better in sales, I had a lot more confidence. I spoke to a lot more prospects. I didn't do all that busy work all the time. So. I think a lot of us go to seminars uh, and focus too much maybe on the technical aspects, um, on the strategies, on the marketing, too much money on marketing, when we have to learn about the conversion. Uh, persuasion and influence is what changed my life. I was struggling. I was knocking on doors. I heard a lot of, uh, I'll think about it. Uh, uh, I'll talk to my spouse. Send me more information. I was doing a lot of free consulting. And um, I was very fortunate. I learned from my mentor. Uh, I had a mentor who could close people in one phone call. Just to going around the room and show of hands, how many people are in real estate in this group? Uh, by show of hands, real. How many people are in uh, other businesses? What other businesses are you guys? Uh, anybody interested in Karina? Are you interested in real estate, or you have another business background? I am actually interested in real estate. That's in what real I'm talking okay. About a lot of my clients are in real, I say half of my clients, I have people I mentor personally in 18 different countries. I would say the 50% or more of my clients are in some area of real estate, as a realtor, as an investor, as a home inspector, um, all different. The other half are in all different kinds of sales, insurance sales, medical sales, financial investing, uh, car, car sales. I work with Audi and Cadillac people. Um, so to me, uh, I developed the gut sales method based on what I learned. Um, I wrote this book, which is free to you guys. If you look in the chat room there, and uh, this is my first book on sales, the gut sales method. Gut stands for great, untraditional, unorthodox techniques of sales. Just go to my uh, webpage. It's in the chat box there, claudediamond.com. 
you'll go to my webpage, it says free book, click on it, and you'll get the free book, okay? So you don't have to spend $99 on Amazon or, e or eBay or something like that. Wow. Uh, so that's a freebie right there. I also have a today for 24 hours, here's my little, little bitty tacky, tacky commercial. And I have a 9.95 package with videos, audios, mind maps, all my books and everything. It's 9.95 for you guys. If you go to the link today in the chat, it's 50% off. If any of you want to take advantage of that, and that also comes with a mentoring training session. Okay, that's my commercial. Just wanted to get that out of the way. So you save 50, you save almost $500 if you click on that link and order it today through PayPal. Um, and you can see that whole package also on my webpage. Um, sales to me is the one thing that none of the gurus, none of the training programs really spend a lot of time on. Um, what I discovered is no matter how hard you work, how much money you spend, that if you are not superb in persuading and influencing another person, okay, someone's got some background noise here and it's annoying and I'm going to mute you if I can find you, okay, or you can mute yourself unless you want to ask a question. Okay, great. The thing about it is, if you are not superb in sales, you're doomed to get frustrated. Boy. Okay, thank Karina. I got to mute you there. Okay, good. Um, the, we spend all the time researching strategies, and we go to a lot of different clients, how to fill out contracts, and do, should we do a lease purchase or whatever. We spend a lot of time on the educational part, and that's important. Then we spend a lot of time on marketing. Some of us spend a great deal of time on leads uh, on there. And the problem is, no matter how, many, how much quality leads you have, how smart you are, and all the strategies or the knowledge of your product or service, you are doomed to fail if you are not excellent in persuading another person to say that they like you, they trust you, they see the value in what you offer. Uh, I'm, I've got a lot of rules in the gut sales method. I'm going to break it down. It's three steps, agenda, qualification, commitment, slash close. It's a very, it's a simple, it's a simple system. And if you can learn it, if you can memorize it, um, you, can make, you can make it so much easier to talk to more prospects. I think the number one reason a lot of us fail is that we don't speak to enough people. What do you guys think about that? I think of, and we hesitate to speak to people, why? Let's be honest here. I know I didn't want to make phone calls because I found it embarrassing. I, who likes rejection? Anybody here, is there anybody here who's, uh, who likes a lot of, re I don't, right, Carlton? I mean, I hate rejection, okay? And the thing about it is, who wants to make phone calls to people who are gonna say no, take me off your list, I don't like you, click? And all the nasty, we, how do we treat telemarketers at dinner time, folks? How do we treat those people who bother us all the time? We don't, like, on them. We give, we don't like them, do we? We don't like them at all. So we've got to, here's a rule for you. I wrote a book recently. It's my, my, late, my, my latest book here while I knock over my camera. Sorry, Periscope people. Um, I wrote a book on the rules of guts. And one of the biggest rules in my gut sales book is that we are, we are not to use scripts. Scripts are caca, scripts, scripts are garbage. Why do you think I dis, and all the other gurus say, oh, I've got a book of scripts here. There's 500 answers to 500 questions. Do you think that's really practical to have a script with preset answers? Or do you think it's better to maybe listen to somebody and use logic in your response? I don't like scripts. I don't think script, I think a professional doesn't have to have scripts if they're a good listener and if they practice, and if they have a sales system. This is what changed my life. My business. I am debt free, I am mortgage free, I am credit card free. Um, uh, I work from my home office and all I do all day long is as the sign behind me says, I give good phone. I talk to people all day long and I don't read a script. I follow a three step system. And these three, and by the way, um, before I get too far down the line, if you guys have questions, um, I'll be taking a lot of questions. If you want to do role plays, um, anything you, you want. Know that, girl. You know the deal. I'm sorry? Wayne? He didn't hear you. Yeah, okay. He's just talking. I, Wayne, did you say something or were you ordering a pizza? <laughs> okay. Where, 
we lost Wayne. The thing of, uh, if you have questions or role plays, I'm more than glad to do them in the time we have here today. It's going to go real fast, guys. I, I love talking about sales. I love, I read a lot of books on sales. And uh, the one takeaway that I want you to t uh, take from this meeting today, this webinar or whatever, is that sales is the million dollar skill. If without hesitation, you can talk to total strangers <coughs> without hesitation, you will see your fortunes change completely. The more people you speak to, and if you can speak to them comfortably and learn how to ask questions, you will, you will see your, your life, your business will change, your confidence will soar. The great, I've studied very successful people, very, very, um, very wealthy people. I changed my fortune. I was a guy who didn't have two nickels to rub together. And my life changed when I became superb at sales. I work at it every day. One of my other rules is you got to speak to five people a day. Can you do that? Can you talk to five prospects or follow-ups a day? Good, because that's what's important. Guts is a question <coughs> system. Okay, Guts is about learning how to ask questions of people, but not cross-examine them like you're, in a, uh, like you're in the courtroom or something. It's about getting them emotionally involved, which leads to my number one rule. This is the most important rule I teach before I get into the system. If you learn this rule, if you practice this rule, if you internalize it, this rule, and you work at it every day, you will be free the rest of your life. And I mean financially free. You guys don't want to hear this rule, do you? I'm hearing crickets here. I'm sorry. Somebody nod your head. Give me a thumbs up. Say yes if you're unmuted. Thank you. Tell us the rule, Claude. I want to hear it. The rule is, this is the Claude's million dollar rule. This is the most important thing I teach. I learned it from my mentor <coughs> every day. And you might agree. You might agree. It's okay to disagree with me too. But people make immediate business decisions emotionally. People make immediate business decisions emotionally. They only justify them after the fact intellectually, logically, academically. Have you, anybody here ever make an emotional decision and the next morning say, oh my God, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I buy that? Is, am I the only one? Carlton, have you ever done that? Okay, Lynette, she's done it too. Okay, so when we're talking to people, if we can ask questions that make them emotional about their need, their greed, their problem, and our product or service can solve that. We're, re we're already in a great position to close with that person. And so that's, that's, you might wanna write that down, put it on a post-it or something like that. If you guys have a question or something, depending on what system you're, you can ask, uh, you can raise your hand, by the way. There's a little button to click, or just on, if you're on video, raise your hand, and I'll try to um, take your question as we're going along. People make immediate business decisions emotionally. They only justify them. Intellection. The opposite. I close people in one phone call. Uh, I'm also a real estate investor. I'm a sales trainer. I'm a business mentor. When I talk to people, I ask the questions up front to find out: Do they have a need? Uh, is this need emotional? Uh, can I qualify them right away? Do they have the money to pay for this need to satisfy it? Do they have the authority to make a commitment on this need? Is it a timely need? Do they want to take care of it now? Anybody here ever have a toothache? Anybody have a toothache once? Oh, yeah. When do, you want, when do you want to lose that toothache? When do you want to go to the dentist? Right now, baby. Carlton said it. Right now. You know what? If you're a crybaby like me, you don't want to wait. You're not going to go in the yellow pages and look for coupons or anything. You just, doctor, take the pain away. Sales is like that. If we can create the emotion, the pain, the needs, the greeds by the questions we ask, the stories we tell the people, up front, we can close them in one phone call. We can get to yes, we can get a commitment, we can get an appointment, or we can get out. Can we sell everybody, by the way? What do you guys think? Good, I see a lot of head shake. We can't sell everybody. Not everyone is a prospect. Some people don't have the need, or we can't make it work, we can't exacerbate it. There's a $10 word, okay? Some people don't have the money to buy the house or to buy the property or to do the deal with us. So we need to qualify them up front. How fast do you think we can qualify people, by the way? <coughs> three minutes, you're right. Here's my three minute timer. All my mentoring students, I have students in 18 different countries. Um, I have well over 100 students right now. Um, three minutes, I want you to have some, an idea in your heart and soul, whether or not, anybody here ever get on the phone with somebody and say, 
I am never going to close this person. There's no way that it's going to happen. And, you cl and you're talking to them and you find out they don't have money. They don't have the need. It's not timely. Oh, call me in six months. I'll think about it. We want to work smarter. We all work hard. What I want to do with Guts is teach you to work so smart that you, make, uh, that you go to your personal bank on a regular basis. You have fun in sales. Does anyone here, when I say sales and fun, that sounds a little weird, doesn't it? Sales should be fun. Can sales be fun? That's a good question, Dave. Can sales be fun? Can you have a good time making money? If you're helping people and making lots of money, then it's, it's amazing fun. Can I have an amen from the group, please? It was like a Baptist revival here. If you, <laughs> if you can make money, <laughs> we got a holy roller over there, Andy. <laughs> if we can make money and help people, yes, we want to sell good products and, serv and services. That's an ethical question, of course. You don't want to sell, you don't want to sell basura. You don't want to sell garbage. Okay, you want to sell good stuff something you believe in because then you have passion for your product or service it's also got to be practical too are you making money with this product or service are you going to your bank today are you getting a contract today are you getting a future appointment today with this this is gut sales is about getting uh, an idea getting information getting closure or getting out in one phone call can you imagine doing that in real estate instead of, how many people here have done this back and forth and back and forth? I'll call you later. I'll stop by the house later. It gets old, doesn't it? When, how, don't we want, don't we want, how many people here like immediate gratification besides me? I love, I love the reward for hard work. I don't want something for nothing, but if I'm giving good information, am I entitled to qualify that person, ask questions and get information? That's what guts is about, working as smart as you can. Put, and I'm going to say something else that's in my guts rules, bo or rules book here. This is kind of controversial, and anybody can disagree with anything I say. This is my personal truth. I think the gut salesman, you people, the salesperson comes first. That's a little controversial. I don't think many sales trainers or gurus out there would agree with that. Uh, a lot of them say give the prospect everything they want and then they'll and then they'll be uh, they'll want to give it back to you. Well, I did that. How many people are given the prospect everything, information and and paperwork and running around and research and then they said, "Well, I'll think about it" or they gave the business even worse. They gave the business to your competition. Am I the only one who's experienced that? I think self-esteem and confidence is so important in sales. The great salespeople, the million-dollar salespeople, have very high self-esteem and confidence. And they put themselves first because they truly believe in their heart and soul that they're giving value to people. And that's, that's what sales can do for you. I think it's the most important thing to focus on. Any, I'm going to go into the gut sales method, and then, and, uh, then we'll uh, take some questions and role plays if you want. Hey, Kawasi, thanks for undressing in front of us. <laughs> Mr. Malik, hey, putting on that, there you go. <laughs> it's amazing what happens on video sometimes. I see babies, I see puppy dogs, I see people dressing. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a new world, isn't it? Hey, Kwasi, thanks for joining us, man. I'm just busting you. Um, the thing about it is, does anyone have a quick question or anything before I move on to the three steps of gut sales? And, okay, no? You have to unmute yourself. Uh, a lot of you are muted. If you have a quickie question, I'll be glad to take it. Otherwise, I'll move forward here. Time is going for 20 minutes are knocked out already here. Going once, twice. Okay, we're mo we'll move on. Guts is comprised of three simple steps. Think of a little staircase, just a simple little staircase and that staircase has three parts that you have to memorize. Now, I talk fast. I'm a transplanted New Yorker who climbed over the wall. I'm in California now, uh, but I still talk fast. And, and I'm still a New Yorker uh, at heart, even though they let me live in California, la la land. Any Californians here? Do we have any, uh, any people here in this crazy, this is the craziest state in the world. There we got Dave Hall there. We have in and out we have in and out burger and bad pizza. We have earthquakes, we have killer bees, we have rain now here too. And we have the world's most expensive gas. Honey, how much did we pay for gas the other day? $68 to fill up a tank of gas. I think it was $389 a gallon or something like that. How can anyone afford to drive anymore? Is that amazing? 
Is that is that wild? Um, but I digress. What was that? We have palm trees. <laughs> you have palm trees. That's right. We have palm we, we trees. We love California. I love California. I, I, I love I, living here. I, we, we, I love it too. I do. I mean, it's the greatest place. Even when it's raining all the time, right? We're used to, in, in, in February, March, January, we're used to 75, 85 degree weather. But what we've had is 40s, 50s, 60s and rain. Although it's San Diego today, it's, in, it's nice. Weather report over. I'm not, I'm not a meteorologist. What, John? John, you said something or was that a no, call? No, sorry. That's all right. Three steps in the gut sales method. First step is agenda. Second step is qualification. Third step is commitment close, commitment slash close. These are, th think of a staircase rising up to the top to closure, to a close. The first step, agenda is comprised of baby, of several baby steps. Um, the agenda is something we do very unique. Remember, I don't like scripts. Um, I don't call up people, hi, I'm reaching out to you today, can I have a minute of your time? That's not the way a gut salesman opens up on the phone. The way we open up on the phone is, hi, I've got your number in front of me here. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, I understand you have a problem. I'd like to help you solve it today. Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, are you ready to do business today? I have a contract in front of me. We do things that are unexpected. These are called pattern interrupts. In the agenda, it's comprised of basically asking permission of the prospect to ask questions. Can I, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, can I ask you a few questions? Then we, uh, then we go into what we call a roadmap. Uh, I want to find out if I get a little information from you, then I can help you decide how to solve your problem if you have one. Or you can, and then number three, I ask them to fire me. Okay, sounds like that TV show that was out, uh, uh, you're fired. Okay, we don't get political here, relax. Uh, <laughs> but the first step is, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, can I ask you a few questions? Maybe I, I have some ideas, I have some solutions. Maybe I can help you solve this problem with your real estate, buying a car, selling your, uh, getting insurance, whatever you're selling. So you ask first permission and then you go into, the reason I, why you ask the questions, and it would sound something like this, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, if I can ask you a few questions, I can help you. You ask me a few questions, then we'll find out if maybe uh, my product or service can solve this issue for you, this problem. And if we can, great. And if not, would you do me a favor? Uh, would you just fire me if this isn't right? You don't have to say you'll think about it. You'll get back to me. You'll talk to your, your spouse. You can just say, Claude, it's over. And can you do that for me, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect? Now, I did that very fast, but the agenda is the most important thing we can get in persuasion. There's a wonderful book out by Dr. Robert Cialdini, The Psychology of Persuasion. And he said the number one way, reason, he's a psychologist, he's head of the University of um, Phoenix, I believe. And this psychologist said the number one reason people buy from other people is they like them. They're comfortable with them. Likeability eventually leads to trust the number one way. How many of us want to go uh, to somebody who, who we like and trust? Don't we remember Cheers? We want to go into a place where everybody knows our name. We want a place that we're comfortable. It's our job to make that, create an environment with that prospect. So we make them, so we, so we sound, so we're not a stranger anymore. There's a, a rule in my guts rule, sales rule book. It's called the 11th commandment. It means you can, you can uh, pardon my language, ladies and gentlemen, it, basically the rule goes like this, that you can, you can still get into heaven by treating a strange salesman like shit. <laughs> okay, how do we treat a stranger? With very little regard, right? We'll never see him again, we can just hang up the phone, it's over. So we wanna change that dynamic, that paradigm. We want that person to say, gee, um, this person sounds like they care, like they wanna help us. So the agenda step is very, is very important for, getting, uh, for initiating a comfortable environment with the prospect, sounding completely different, sounding unscripted, um, and just getting to them, say, I'm going to ask you questions, you ask me a few, then we'll find out uh, how bad this problem is, how soon you want to try solve it, and, um, and then if we can do business, great. If not, uh, either you fire me or I'll fire you. Is that fair, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect? Boom. That's an agenda real succinctly. Okay, I'm moving a little faster. Next step is, of course, qualification. We need to qualify some, and very, what things do we need to qualify about the prospect? First of all, 
what's their needs and greeds, their level of emotional motivation, right? Remember I said the million dollar rule earlier? You guys remember that? So what's their level of motivation? We put them on a scale. We call this scale um, the guts barometer, one through 10. How many of us love that warm prospect who has a need, who says, oh, I, maybe you can help me. I called about your program, about your real estate. We love that eight, nine, or 10 prospect. But sometimes we get a prospect who's a one, two, or three. It is our responsibility to learn how to ask questions and make them and create more motivation in them, exacerbate existing problems. And we do that by asking questions. We want to determine that level of motivation on them and give them a score. We want to know what's their, um, uh, do they have the authority to make a decision? Mr. and Mrs. Prosper, how do you make, you're buying a home from me today or where I'm going to buy your home. How do you make decisions in your family? How does that work? Can you make it unilaterally? Do you have to go to a board of directors? Do you have to go to your spouse? Do you have to go to your pet rock and light a candle in church? What do you have to do? Okay, so we want to we wanna find out how the, the authority. We want to find out the time frame here. Uh, what, uh, when do you want to solve this problem? Today, tomorrow, six months, six years, never? We want to find out what's the time frame also uh, on that. Very important. What's the number one thing that's the most important? The money, right? How many of us were raised in a family where they, money is never talked about at the dinner table? Okay. You, Keith? Okay. I think, when, should, when do you think, Keith? Let me unmute you for a second here. A little audience participate. Keith, when do you think is the most important time to talk about money? You're not allowed to yawn there, Mr. Vasquez. No yawning allowed when I'm speaking. That's a, here's a cup of coffee for you, sir. Here it's go. It's decaf, though. It might not help. Keith, when do you think we should talk about money? I mean, probably, probably in the beginning, correct? Or? That's rude. How are you going to talk about money up front to a prospect, though? How dare you? Do you think you have the right to do that? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to waste their time or mine. Okay. So you feel you have a right to talk about money up front? I don't know. You tell me. I, I, well, I'm, trying to, I'm a little bit of a Socratic teacher. I might pull it out of you before I give you the answer. On it. But honestly, I believe money should be spoken about, spoken to up front. It might go something like that. Mr. and Miss, oh, somebody down here called owner with a nice red shirt on. Uh, Mr. Owner, if, if I can help you solve your problem, if I can help you buy or sell your home or your car, your insurance, if I can help you solve your problem today, do you mind if we talk about money for a moment before we get into all the details and everything? And I give you that two hour million dollar presentation. Can we talk about money, Mr. Owner? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, in order for you to buy this house, you're going to need uh, option consideration. You're going to need some money up front. The rent is $2,000 a month. What will 2000 get you in California? A cardboard box behind the Walmart probably right now. Uh, okay. For those my California people. The thing about it is, can we talk about money now? Is this comfortable? If I can help you solve your uh, problem, buy or sell your home within your budget, is this comfortable for you, sir? Yep. This is where you say yes, hopefully. And I say, well, what is your budget now? We just share it with round numbers for you. What is your mortgage, sir? You mind if we talk about your mortgage? I'm going to buy your property. Can I ask you about your, can I ask you about your mortgage? Uh, a lot of people are nervous about asking this question during qualification. They, they, they're worried the prospect will say, none of your business what my mortgage is. So you, what you want to, might want to do is make it a little softer. You don't have a mortgage still, do you, Mr. Owner? Nope. Oh, no, no mortgage, free and clear. How, wow, how did you do that? Good for you, sir. Not many people have, that, have had that, um, have that occur to them. You must have done something right. Share, your, share it with me. What did you do right? I worked. <laughs> you worked. Okay, good answer. There you go. I worked. It worked hard. Let me ask you something. If I could give you, and then you go into it. Or if you want to know their mortgage, say your mortgage is what? 100, 350, 500,000, roughly round numbers, sir. Could you share that with me? And we're trying to get numbers. We're trying to get the math. We're trying to get how much money they're going to pay us or how much we, uh, how much we want to pay for their property. Information is powerful in guts. So we're in the second step here. Now we want to qualify for money, authority, um, a, a pain or needs and greeds on there. We want a time frame. We also want to qualify them for character. Okay. So if, 
if if I go if I go to Sam Wynn and I say Sam um, Sam if I can help you satisfy all these issues within your budget comfortably in the time frame you're looking for um, do you feel we could move forward or or would you rather say no right now to me and you would say yeah we can move forward well, I'm we sorry. Can move forward. oh you did I'm sorry what what did you say we, uh, we can move forward okay I get a hearing deficit when I hear good news I like it repeated okay <laughs> kind of that last nail in the coffin thing. I like super commitment. There you go. There you go, baby. It works. You know, you tell them, hey, I got these Walmart hearing aids, you know, and uh, could you repeat that again? We like good news twice. So this is the, um, get me a sandwich, will you, Mr. Vasquez? Um, <laughs> it's amazing what, you can have a lot of fun on video. <laughs> the... <laughs> That, so that's the second step, that's qualification. So we've moved from agenda, which is a simple introduction to create an environment of like likeability and trust. We then move into qualification, okay? We wanna get that hard information. Then we move into what, what is called commitment close. And we basically say in the commitment close, um, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, you should thank you for sharing all that information. Um, if I can help you solve this problem in the time frame for the budget you're looking for and you're comfortable with decision, how do you, what, what do you think would happen next? How do you feel about this? Would you like to move forward or is it over? And you're looking for some kind of commitment, getting up that yes ladder a little bit, getting them used to them saying yes, or finding out if you have new obstacles. We call those obstacles stalls, and, ob stalls and objections, things like that. And we're trying to move, and we're trying to move up that ladder and get to a close. Now in guts, we don't beg for the order. We don't, we, there's no begging in guts. We make the prospect give it to us. Why do we want them to give it to us? Because it's their decision and, a, and rather than make them feel cornered or high pressure like typical, like a used car salesman person, it's much better to get them to make the decision. How many people here love when you buy something? Oh, I can't wait to buy this. Isn't there a satisfaction in making a commitment that's something you really want? that you've, you've done your research, you've done your homework. So that's what we're looking for in that third step, the close step. Through this, oh, go ahead. Claude, yes, sir. so you were talking about the, the gut scale. What happens if you, you know, you get, you're, you're just going through the qualification phase and you're just having a hard time moving somebody up from a three or a four upwards. It just, they're stalled right there. What do you do? If you, that's a great question. Uh, back to that one through 10 barometer, we've got to get them up to an eight, nine, or 10 to close them. If we, if we don't, if, we, if they're just hanging around a five, six, seven, they might be a, what we call a follow-up, okay? We're not going to close them today. The motivation, the need, the emotional, uh, what we call the EQ, the emotional quotient is not strong enough there. So what we want to do is say, let me, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, let me send you my contact information. Doesn't sound like we're going to do business today. Before I go, um, you know, should I, uh, would you like me to send you an offer? Um, I use a letter of intent sometimes where I make a multiple offer uh, to them. I will put that into Evernote. How many people here use Evernote? I love it. I use Evernote all the time, and I will take all my notes that I wrote down with the conversation with the prospect, I will put it into Evernote, and I will set a timer for, let's say, if there are six, seven, and eight, but I can't close them today, I'm gonna to follow up in two weeks to 30 days. Follow up is very important with your prospects, okay? If there are one, two, three, you're not gonna close them. You're wasting your time. How many people here have spent too much time too long a presentation, too much gas burned, to taking entertaining, whining and dining people, and you never got them past the three. Yeah. I, I'm, I am so guilty of being, I'm the world's, former world's worst salesman. If I got somebody to listen to me, I would spend an inordinate amount of time giving them the presentation, repeating the presentation, asking for the order, and more and more time. All I was doing was free consulting. Why are we in business, ladies and gentlemen? Make money. Make money today. And you're leaving out the most important word to make today. money today, today, baby. Thank you from the peanut gallery. It was my wife. She said today. It's not her first con. It's not her first converse, uh, consultation here. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about it is, um, we don't want to waste our time, our natural resources, our time, our knowledge, our energy. Most salespeople are, you know, that old thing. If you knock on a hundred doors, walk into the sunshine and knock on another hundred doors. 
that's that's bullshit. Okay. I'm not <laughs> hey, gonna Paul, can I follow up? Yes, follow up. So two things. How do you get them off of a there's you know, is there a way to move them from a three to a six? Number one. And number two, um, how do you know what number they're on? It's kind of – I'll take the second one first. How do you know what number you, – you know when they're asking interesting questions and you've qualified them. They've got the need, they've got the money, and they've got the authority to, to make a decision on a timely basis. When you're, when you're going through your qualification step and you're hearing the right stuff, instinctually you know, I've got a hot prospect, right? Isn't that what we say? And that's, yeah. and that's the person. And you give them that score. Are they an 8, 9, or 10? Are they a four, five, six, or a one, two, and three? I don't want to waste more too much time on a one, two, and three. That's why I have a three-minute timer. I'm going to politely fire them. If they're a four, five, six, I might send them a follow-up video. I send everybody follow-up audio. Good man, Mr. Vasquez. Nice going there. You know, like he has his three-minute timer. You can use this on your honeymoon too. It also works. Oh, I know. She hates that joke. Hey, I brought two of them. I brought two of them with me on my honeymoon. How about? The <laughs> okay, bad jokes, bad humors. This is not the Ron LeGrand seminar, I'll tell you that right now. Um, <laughs> the thing about it is, you've got to make a judgment on the value of time. Million dollar salespeople, where do we spend our time? With the, with the hot prospect. They have the need and they have the money to pay for the need. Okay, if there's someone who's, and so you've got to make that decision and you've got to be, watch your time. I'd rather make a lot more phone calls and talk to people. I will do a follow-up. I will send them information, a lot of times a video or an audio. Mr. or Mrs. Prospect, it was a pleasure to speak with you. I've attached an offer or a letter of intent to this video. Please, here's my phone number. Please feel free to get back to me if you think we can do business today. Uh, look forward to our next conversation. Then I'll put them in Evernote. I might follow up in 30 days or review my notes. And say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, you must have sold that home by now, right? Oh, you didn't. Gee, my notes here say that you're moving in two weeks and your kids have to go into start school and you have a new job and everything. How are you going to solve those problems? And this is how sometimes you take a three or four and make them into an eight, nine, or ten. You're asking questions to determine their level of motivation. When we ask questions, they should be nurturing questions. You know, that's where you blend them with a story or something that gets them in to keep their interest. And you tell them, you know, same thing happened to a friend of mine, couldn't sell their house. They had to move a thousand miles away. They had two mortgages. Somebody broke a window in the house. They had to get a plane tickets and fly. I, have you thought about that? I hope something like that doesn't happen to you, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect. And what you're doing is you're, you're exacerbating their needs. You're making it worse. Anybody here ever get a paper cut and then you got a lemon or something on your hand? Ow, right? I hate paper cuts. Um, we're trying to make it so that they get so emotional, that million dollar rule again. And it's our responsibility to create this environment with the stories we tell and the questions we ask. Our questions should be, uh, we should compliment them. When they ask us a question, we give them what is commonly referred to as a stroke, a sincere, con oh, it's a good question, Miss Prospect. Thank you for, I wish more people would ask me questions like that. Thank you. Oh, okay, boom. That's a stroke. People like stroke. Don't we all love strokes when they're sincere? Don't we love, oh, Claude, I love your Under Armour shirt. Is that, the <laughs> boom. This black, black, what a wonderful color. <laughs> I heard a moan back here. Okay, the thing about it is we give strokes. Sometimes we have to nurture them. Nurturing is when we tell a story or we ask a question that evokes an emotional response on it. This is psychology. The guts is really based on asking questions the right way and blending in these different rules of psychology that make people that persuade people, that influence them. So, uh, did I, Dave? Did I answer your question? Um, did I, did I, did I, did I kind of cover it uh, the way you? Yep. Were? I've, yeah, I think you covered the bases. Yep. I it especially is, like the part where you were talking about the follow-up uh, for you know people who are kind of stuck in the middle. First, you try to move them off of that middle point, you know, by asking the questions and telling the stories and being nurturing and stroking. And then, if that doesn't work, you you follow up. You put it in, in a CRM or Evernote or whatever and follow up. Exactly. Now, for a lot of you who came on late or something like that, I have a I have a free book. It's in my it's in my chat box there. 
Um, you can get this book by just going to my webpage, no gimmicks or anything. You won't be inundated by emails and, and th I don't like click don't funnels like and things like that too that bother people. I don't, I don't believe in being annoying people to persuade them. I believe in, in letting them see the value, but I have a free book. So you don't have to spend a hundred dollars on Amazon.com or, or whatever. And it's just ClaudeDiamond.com, and you'll see a free book on my webpage there. Um, and just click it and you'll get a free book. Okay. So a lot of the things I'm talking about very fast today, you can read and you can review in this book. It's a story about a, it's a, about a story about a salesperson who, um, couldn't sell and he learned, uh, he learned this system and it's a happy ending. Okay. Uh, on that. I also have a few, if you are interested in learning more about the gut sales method, I'm doing a 24 hour special 50% off. That link is also in the chat box there. Uh, you get my whole 995 package for, I think, 495, uh, just for four hours. Somebody, sorry to interrupt, Clyde. A few times that people said they couldn't get the link. I pasted it below. Is everybody able to get the link? It's if not. It's yeah. in the chat box. You got to click that little button. It's in your chat box there. Uh, also, if you go to ClaudeDiamond.com, yeah, go to go down to products. Um, you'll, you'll just it's on the same page. You just scroll down to my products. You'll see the gut sales package 2019. You click on it. I've actually set the reduce the price for 24 hours in that on my web page there too. So it's all automatic. It's all PayPal. You get it immediately digital. You get audios, videos, books, mind maps, and a free mentoring, a one-on-one -on -one private mentoring session uh, for $4.95 instead of $9.95. Commercial over. Um, the thing, let's go back to, um, uh, Dave, did you finish up on that question or you had a follow-up? That, that's it for that question. Go ahead. Um, so we have these three steps, agenda, qualification, commitment, close. This is a question-based system. Persuasion is about getting somebody else emotionally involved, getting them to listen, to respect you, getting them to, who should talk more, by the way? This is funny coming from me. The prospect or the salesperson? Who should do most of the yakking here? Prospect. Who said the prospect? Uh, I did. Katie. You did. The moderator. We want to get them talking more. When people talk more and they share us their story, their problem, because we've broken down the barriers. How many people, you know, when you sound, when you get a salesperson who calls you, do we, and they interrupt dinner, do we immediately put up a barrier? Do we, what it goes on in our head right away? What do we immediately think? Oh God, a salesperson, right? Do we, does our defense shield go up when we meet that over-aggressive, that typical salesperson who comes into our lives who was an uninvited guest? Anybody here ever go to a car dealership? Hi there. Welcome to ABC Chevrolet. You know, oh, you know, boom. Right away, what goes on in your mind? Who oh, they want to sell me a car. They want to pressure me. They want to intimidate me. Okay. We don't try, in, in guts, we try to act more like a do the doctor. How did, how, don't we all want a trusted doctor who says, gee, why are you here? Uh, where does it hurt? When did it start hurting? Did it hurt your mother and father? Are you taking any medication? Do we mind somebody who we trust who possibly, and we have a pain or a problem, do we mind them asking those intrusive questions? Not at all. Because we are hoping they will remove our problem, our pain. We want to convey, in guts, we want to be the doctor in the room. We want to convey to people that we're somebody who has solutions. We've studied this. See, we, we all say and, uh, we're professionals, but professionals don't sound like used car sales person, people, do they? They don't read a script. They don't give a long-winded presentation. A, a professional says, gee, why are we talking today? What's the problem? Oh, why don't you give your home to a realtor if you're trying to sell it? Why are we, what, why are we talking today? What would you like to see happen? Why? You've been in that home 20 years. Why don't you stay another 20 years? I'm trying to ask questions with stroking, nurturing, and number three, empathy, that gets them so emotionally involved that they want to dialogue with me. Okay? And the test is, can you, can you speak to strength? How many people here had a mom or dad? Who, uh, who said, don't talk to strangers, right? All of us, I hope, right? Okay, and here's your big bad Uncle Claude saying, I want you to talk to, I want you to get in a Starbucks line. I want you to go to the Walmart greeter and test yourself. Can you, can you engage people in a conversation from ground zero? Can you do that? 
Hey, how's your day going? Or gee, where's the gee? Uh, uh, what's your favorite coffee here at Starbucks? Can you talk to total strangers in the grocery store line at Ralph's? Can you do that? When you when you have learned that skill, when you have that level of confidence, you become a million dollar salesperson. When you're engaging people, it's amazing. My wife and I, true story. The uh, last week we're in the produce aisle, and some guy started talking about lettuce with us, or something. Is this good lettuce or something? Some silly question. Before I knew it, I, my word of honor here. You're gonna have to take. He gave us his card. He's a carpet cleaner. And I said, I'm a sales trainer, and I love what you just did to me. I, I know exactly what you did. I train people to do this, and you did it to me, and now I have your card. Do I like this guy? Do I respect him? Is he going to clean my carpets? I don't know. Our car, we just had him clean. So, But the thing about it is, if he goes to enough people and engages them, is he going to clean a lot of carpets? Absolutely. 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 We've got Bob, about – we have a question in the chat. Sure. Let's go. What, where, let's see the question. Stranger danger. Thank. I see that difference between 2019 gut sales training and the uh, old classic. Uh, they're both. They're really the same. I probably have it duplicated in there because I put the. I discounted it 50. percent The 2019 has all my books. The uh, the gut sales method. How to sell with guts. The brand new book, The Gut Sales Rule, it has hours of training modules and videos. I have 26 new video training videos where I go into great depth on how to ask questions, how to qualify people quick. I have an audio, uh, uh, audio uh, training system in there also. Uh, I have mind maps. Um, it's, a huge, it's a huge package um, in there. It also comes with a free one-on-one -on -one training session. So after you digest all this material on how to be a gut salesperson, how to give good phone, like the sign says, then you can schedule with me and pick my brain uh, on Zoom or Skype or something like that. So, so Claude, yes, we have, a, we have a lot of people on here who um, are looking for influencers or a sales job opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I know you teach people how to sell for themselves. Could you talk about that for a little bit? Um, I work with people. All over the world, some of them work for companies. Some of them sell themselves. They sell their own products. They they're real estate investors. Um, to you know the one the, I love what I do. Okay? I could have retired 15 years ago or more. Um, I will never retire because all I do is I sit at my desk in this lovely home in San Diego and I talk to nice people on the phone. Sometimes I talk on FaceTime or Skype or Zoom. All I do is give good fun. I don't have to get in my car. I don't have to put on a suit. I don't have to sit in traffic on the 40805 and spill coffee between my legs. I'm famous for that. Um, I just work off the phone. I try to use video a lot, by the way. I, I love these, all the video. How many of you have iPhones? They have a wonderful system built in, FaceTime. If you, ha uh, if you have Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger now, you can do video uh, communication. You can use uh, Skype is free and Zoom is free. Um, I really try to get people in the video. So instead of getting in my car or getting on an airplane anymore, I do everything on video and I talk to at least five people a day. Uh, I work from home. I'm a home buddy. Uh, my wife makes great coffee and the bathrooms are much cleaner than the airport. Okay. Um, so I love working from home. Thank you for smiling, Lynette. I appreciate that. Um, did I answer that question? I don't know. I might have gone on a tangent there. Yeah, we want to see if anyone else has any questions. So I guess we've got uh, 12 more minutes. I, I'm an entrepreneur to me is someone who loves to have their own, take responsibility, have no limits on their income. They want to take a day off. You want to take a nap on the couch. You, um, you don't have to play office politics. How many people here have had corporate jobs? Like I've had Fortune 500 jobs. I hate the politics. I hate someone else deciding uh, my movement uh, to the glass ceiling. I want to be, I'm a horrible employee. Uh, I, I'm really, uh, you know, and there's nothing wrong with working for good companies. This is subjective, but I love the freedom. Uh, I work harder for myself than I've ever worked for a company. Okay, I'm a recovering attorney and I just love talking and selling. And not everybody says yes to me. But I, I, the conversations are what I call productive, they're entertaining, and this is a system that you can learn. Once you get good, superb at sales, your life changes. You're, you're, you just feel, you're happy. You feel good about yourself. You've solved the money problem. You're talking to nice people. 
you're, that feeling of freedom is, is that, and that to me came to me, and I think to some of you, that comes, or, that comes from being, understanding how other people feel, empathy, and saying the right words, the right questions at the right time. Questions before we run out of time. Go ahead, Dave. Do we, you moderate. Do we have a question on the um, chat box there, or does someone yeah, want to? Guys, just go ahead and unmute yourself, uh, ask a question, or you can put one in the uh, chat, and I'll read it out, which, whichever way you want to do it. I got one question. Can you talk about your training in real estate? I, um, I do mentoring. I, I mentor people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I do a group call like this every Monday with my mentees. Dave has attended many of them. Um, and we talk about deals and we role play. We, and, it's an, and, and everybody gets to participate. And it's a, it's a true uh, group session. Uh, and we do that every Monday just to get the week off to a good start. Then I also do private 30-minute um, consultations or mentoring sessions. To, uh, I'll even make phone calls with some of my clients just to show them how easy it is to make a phone call to a total stranger. Um, I have a video on YouTube. Uh, it's had close to 100,000. It's gone viral. Um, I did it with Joe McCall where he gave me a cold call number to make, and I closed that person on that one phone call. I, got, I was either very good that day or very lucky. And, and to me, um, if, I can, if I can just get comfortable on the phone and talk to enough people, the magic always happens. Um, that's what I want to train people in my mentoring program, how to get so comfortable, so confident, give them the right tools. It's about practicing. on a re If you practice enough your, your ability to persuade people, you know, wealthy, I've studied wealthy people. Wealthy people in business are usually great communicators. They know how to get their point across. They know how to get people emotionally involved. And when you learn, this is the million dollar skill. When you learn this skill, it, uh, it, it just, everything falls into place in your real estate business or whatever you're selling. Honestly, it's, it's the one thing I want you to take away from uh, this meeting today. You can work on the strategies. You can work on the marketing. That's all fine. But how do you make money? When you communicate to another people, they like and trust you and they say the magic word, yes. They give you that contract. That's where that's where sales, persuasion, and influence come in. And that's what my mentoring program is all about. It's a, it's a one-year program um, where we work intensely on, on the sales skills. Uh, I've seen too many people go to too many seminars. I've been teaching this stuff for 30 years. They've been going to too many seminars. They've been spending too much money, and they're not going to the bank. And the one reason, I think, is the same reason why I didn't succeed initially. I was shy. I was, I was shy, word of honor. I was reluctant on the phone. I, it's, I was reluctant on the phone. I didn't want to make, I'd rather clean the toilet than make a phone call to a stranger. Anybody there ever feel that way about it? Truth be told, come on, you're on Sodium Pentothal and Canadian Club. Okay, or Grey Goose, if you choose. Okay, the thing about it is, once we get on that phone and we know what to do through a system, a three-step system, and what questions to ask, and get into that friendly dialogue, magic happens. You close more people, or at least you feel so good about yourself that you can make more phone calls. The more calls you make, the more follow-up you do, you go to the bank. It's that simple. This is what successful people do. And I think only your Uncle Claude is, talks about this a lot. Uh, I, 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 fervent, I fervently believe, I'm passionate about sales because it changed my fort. I was a guy who was broke to becoming financially free the rest of my life just by giving, by learning how to communicate better with people. It's what changed everything. Can you run through the initial call intro once more? Who's gonna, who is that? Uh, Kwasi, Malik, where are Kwasi, are you there? Can you hear me? I don't, I'm not getting any audio from you. I was yeah, gonna- can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. All right, you good, have, yeah. What, uh, Kwasi, what, um, are you in real estate or what's your business? Yeah, so I actually got here. Keith sent me here, but uh, I am in real estate. You know, I do have a cold call script. Call me I really out. Let, like... me, let me hear 30 seconds of your cold call scripts. By the way, oh, man, don't do I that hate, to me right now. I hate scripts, by the way. Scripts are no big no no. Scripts are a dirty word in the gut sales method. Let me hear your script. 30 seconds. Hello, this is Claude, the naive Gosh. investor. 
Wait one second. Let me grab that script for you. No, 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 gra- no, no, no. We're, we're on the clock here. Just go. <laughs> you know what you say. What's your intro? All right, say say it one more time, please. Um, hello. This is Claude. Hi, this is Quasi. Uh, I run a real estate management company. Uh, what was next? Do you have a property that you're interested in selling today? No, uh, you're the tenth guy to call me today. What? You a realtor or one of these bottom feeding investors? Who are you? No, I'm actually someone who uh, is looking to see if you have a property that you're interested in selling. No, Do you okay. have a property that you're interested in selling today? Oh, okay, give him a round of applause. He did that very well. I put him on the spot there. You no, said, you really did, though. <laughs> I really did. It's okay. We're a fun group here. We're not here to embarrass you. We're here to teach, to make you smart, to make him go to the uh, Malik National Bank, right? I do like the bank. It's a good bank, okay? The thing about it is, the minute you called me up and you introduced yourself, I'm with a company, uh, the minute you said that same old repetitive script, what do you think's going through my mind right away? What do you think? What do you think's going through my head? It raises your defense slightly. And yeah, the wall comes up. I'm going, oh shit, Margaret, he's a salesman. Okay, right away, I'm going, salesman. The wall goes up, the defense shield goes up. What did they call that? Def- wasn't it a defense shield in Star Trek or something like that, force field? But, okay, but if you do something we call in guts a pattern interrupt, if you interact with me, if you were my next door neighbor, my doctor, my best friend from high school, and you called me up, how would you, how would you initiate a phone call? How would, what would the uh, first part of the phone call st- sound like? It'd be a lot more organic. You know, hey, what's up? How's it going? Yeah, Something if you were my doctor, Dr. Malik, and I walked in with that gown, that with the opening in the back, and I walked into your, uh, in, I walked into your examination room. You haven't seen me in a couple of years. What would you say to me, Dr. Malik? You have AIDS. <laughs> oh, you're not nice. Oh, that was nasty. Whoa. Did you have a bad day? You got to switch to decaf, sir. Yeah, I've been uh, actually. I'm kind of hooked on these caffeine drinks called Bangs from. Okay, GNC. quit them. They're horrible for your central yeah. nervous system. But I'm not a health counselor. They're actually horrible. The thing about it is, what would you say? Let, let's. Uh, who can? Who wants to do a role play here? Because Kwasi's in a bad mood right now. Who's going to ask me? Uh, I'm. A, I'm a patient. Who's going to be my doctor? Lynette, you want to be my doctor? Been cold. I'm sick. <laughs> Lynette, I, you're my doctor. I came in to see you with my beautiful gown on. Oh, no. <laughs> what, do to, what do you say to me, doctor? Yes, hello, Claude. You don't look too well. What can I do for you today? Oh, thank you for asking, Dr. Sugars. Uh, I, I got this pain in my neck recently. Oh, that's not too good. Dan, how did you get that? Boom. She's, thank you, Lynette. Uh, that, that's, she's asking me questions. By the way, do I mind her asking me those questions? Because the pain is great. And in sales, when we're dealing with prospects, we want to I try to identify what their problem is, throw them off guard with a, what we call a pattern interrupt. So when I call somebody on the phone, the first thing I'm going to say, Lynette, I heard you have a problem over there. What's going on with that property on Maple Drive? Yeah, I, I'm having a lot of trouble actually trying to sell it. So um, I can't imagine yeah. why. It's a beautiful neighborhood. It's good school, oh. nice shopping, and everything. My name's Claude Diamond, by the way. You wouldn't want to sell. You wouldn't want to sell that today, would you? Well, uh, I'd like to sell it as soon as possible. What? Why? What? Uh, what sort I'd of like idea? Buy, I'd like to buy an investment property as soon as possible. Can I ask you a couple of questions? You ask me a few, and then we'll yeah, figure yeah. out if we can do business today, or you can sure. buy. Yeah. Is Go that, ahead. Boom. Do you see the difference, Kwasi? The, the, rather than scripted, I went right into I went right into a question. I might even call up. I might even call up somebody, and uh, I might call up Mr. Dave Hall, and I'll say, uh, Dave, uh, Dave, I got Dave your Dave. I got your number in front of me here. Why am I calling you today? This isn't about real estate, is it? I don't know. You called me. You're right, sir. You get a cookie. Um, but uh, your number's for this is Dave Hall, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? I'm, I'm sorry. Are you selling something? Uh, well, I, um, I, do you want me to? Uh, I mean, I'm, no, I'm really, you just got this little post it on my thing here. I get a lot of people call me about real estate. So you, you don't have a, a piece of property. You don't want to buy or sell anything today, right? This is not about real estate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a house, but I've been getting a lot of calls on it. Okay. Well, that's good, isn't it? Don't you want to sell it? Yeah, yeah. It's just been a lot of real estate agents trying to get me on list stuff. 
Oh, okay. I'm a private investor. I'm looking for an investment property in your neighborhood. Tell me why I should buy your property today. Who did, See what I, off the role play, what I try to do, and we're almost out of time here, I'm trying to make the prospect into the salesperson. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I want them to do, I don't want to give a presentation. I don't want to be scripted. I want to ask the questions the right way that make the prospect not think I'm just another salesperson, another realtor. I want them to forget about that, go into a temporary trance, if you will, and just start responding to my questions because they're a little bit off balance. They've never heard that question or that opening statement. Guts is about my study of, of psychology and how to get people to respond in such a way that I get a dialogue, I get a confirmation, uh, permission to ask questions, I get information, and I get a commitment or a sale or a contract or I get out. It's an actual system of how to sell people so that you're not just doing that uncomfortable dialogue all the time. Dave, do we have time for uh, one more question or should we call it a day? Uh, we can take one more. We have one more question and then you guys are, and then we're gonna call it a day. Hey, was this good value for 60 minutes? Yeah. Did you guys get a few ideas here? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Claude. I need that. I need those strokes. Thank you. I'm very insecure today. Thank you. Um, last question. Who'd like to raise your hand or just go for it? Okay, we have a we have a question in the chat. I want to read. This from David Lee. Uh, are the uh, the group coaching calls included in the 2019 Guts Classic Sales Training and Mentoring Package? Well, uh, technically, no. They are only for my mentoring students. However, who asked that question? David Lee. David, where are you? David. David, hop on here if you're here. Let's role play that. David, suppose I did allow you to attend one uh, group Monday mentoring session. Suppose I included that in my package today. What would you say to me next? Uh, hi, Claude, can you hear me? Yes, David, suppose that if you bought my package today and I allowed you to go into my Monday group call, which is not included, but uh, if for today only, if I was willing to do that, what would you say to me next, Mr. Lee? Well, I'd say you're awesome. Which uh, awesome means what, though, David? Uh, I'd say that uh, that sweetens the deal. That sweetens the deal, but not enough to say yes today, would it? Uh, could be. Could be yes or could be no. You decide. <laughs> could be yes. What, oh, I'm sorry, what? Could be yes. It could be yes. Okay. So really, so even though you asked me for something and I gave it, we can't get to a firm commitment today. What's the, what, what, do you, what else do you need from me in order to get a, get a commitment today? Just one group coaching call? What do you mean? You said if, if you included just one group coaching call. That That's right. What is it you just want? One. What, is it, uh, what is it you want in order to get you to stop saying probably and say yes? Uh, I guess more than one group coaching call, maybe a, maybe a period of time uh, that would include that. Um, the, a period of time. I don't know what you mean. What exactly do you want in order for us to move forward today, David? Um, six months. Can't do six months. I charge 25000 to coach people. I'm not going to give it away for a four ninety five package, but I appreciate you asking me, and I will – just because you asked, I will include a Monday group call in that package. Boom. That was just, thank you, Dave. That was a good role play, by the way. Great. Thank you. You guys see what I do, how I turn a question into a question, or I try to get a commitment? Uh, absolutely. And David asked for everything, and I have the right also to say no. Do we have rights as salespeople in the sales process? Yes. Ab absolutely. When you learn how to ask questions, how to stand up for yourself, how to have confidence, how to get overcome, I'll think about it, and I'll get back to you later, and just get closure. Either you go forward, you follow up, <clears throat> over. When you learn how to do that, and you make sales much more comfortable and fun, you make a lot more money. Great People who reach, who get into high six, seven, and even eight-figure incomes are because they're great communicators, and they know how to do the million dollar rule. What's the million dollar rule before we go? Who memorized it? People make emotional decisions of, to do business all the time, and then they, then they uh, justify it academically or logically later.
Absolutely. Close. People, you left out the most important word. People make it Today. immediate. I was trying to get David Lee. I was trying to corner him. I was trying to get an immediate commitment and decision for him. If I gave him something, would he give me something? But then he started doing the maybes, probably's words, which is real world. I was really glad he did that with me because that's real world. You have to get over those probably's, maybe should have's, could have's when you're talking with people. But if you can get people emotional enough about the value of a 995 program that I that I'm doing for 24 hours for 495 for today only for 24 hours and they see the value in it and they enjoy this pithy little 65 minute consult uh, tr uh, group call we did today well then maybe we'll do business and maybe some good things will happen you guys were great today thank you for joining me um, if you go to my webpage claudediamond.com uh, and register I you will get a free book uh, regardless uh, on this and thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Give yourselves a round of applause here Thank, thank you, you Todd. You guys are great. Thank you. And thank you, David. I think you record uh, we recorded this So I think you'll have the recording also available. Yep. So I'll record this and this will go up in the boom cubator Which is a Facebook group that I have called the boom cubator. This is where we uh, incubate boom So the boom is a sale so we're all all in the same business and then in the boom closers that's a club for people who are doing uh, actively doing sales and so i'll post this video up in both of them thank you thank you, thank you everybody and uh my people on periscope and facebook live i'm sorry if i was ignoring you guys a little bit it's hard to use multiple screams here maybe i'll after i shut up on zoom i'll go uh, i'll take some questions on uh, facebook and periscope okay thanks everybody on zoom see you later